Trudeau's back at it again with his sneaky scandals and blatant corruption. The Prime Minister is once again swimming in controversy as the CBC savagely slashes jobs while its president refuses to rule out massive executive bonuses. And this all happens while Trudeau is soaking up the sun on an all-expenses-paid vacation courtesy of his rich best buddy. While Trudeau lives large on his bud's dime, everyday Canadians are struggling just to fill their gas tanks. And don't expect any accountability. Trudeau's BFF, the ethics commissioner, says is all good. Both situations reveal an elitist, out-of-touch mentality among Trudeau and his liberal cronies. The Trudeau liberal government is a textbook example of corruption in plain sight. With lie after scandal after controversy, it's no wonder Trudeau gets mobbed by angry protesters and needs security to rush him away. With Trudeau's track record, the next scandal is always just around the corner. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is no stranger to controversy and scandal. Since becoming Prime Minister in 2015, his tenure has been marked by repeated ethics violations, inappropriate vacations, and other lapses in judgment that undermine his self-professed commitment to transparency, equality, and serving the Canadian people. People are so sick of Trudeau that he now gets regularly mobbed by protesters, chanting the phrase, shame, shame, Trudeau, in the streets, so much so that he needs his security to escort him away. Shame, Trudeau! Shame, shame, Trudeau! Shame on you! 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 It has become crystal clear that Canadians just do not want Justin Trudeau as Prime Minister. His latest controversies involve both Trudeau himself and the leadership of the CBC, Canada's public broadcaster. First, it was revealed that Trudeau accepted an expensive elite vacation at a luxury villa in Jamaica as a gift from a wealthy family friend. Around the same time, the Liberals have already been under fire since the CBC announced plans to cut hundreds of jobs to address budget shortfalls. Yet the CBC's director, Catherine Tate, has just refused to rule out awarding large bonuses to CBC executives this year. This tone-deaf decision rightfully prompted public criticism that CBC leadership is more focused on enriching themselves than serving Canadians. Both situations reveal an elitist, privileged mindset among Trudeau and his Liberal Party allies. They claim to stand for equality, diversity, and compassion while enjoying lavish perks and evading accountability for their own controversial actions. Trudeau defended the free luxury vacation by claiming it was acceptable because the villa owner was a close family friend. And now, the temporary ethics commissioner has declared that Trudeau's free Jamaica vacation stayed within the rules, all because he stayed with a true friend. This was a true friend who has no relations to the government of Canada, Mr. Von Finkenstein told the committee, giving his stamp of approval and absolving Trudeau of any ethics violations. But most Canadians do not have ultra-wealthy friends offering them free stays in beachside villas that normally cost over $80,000. According to the National Post, Trudeau and his family vacation at a luxurious Jamaican villa owned by his family friend Peter Green. The nine-day stay in the $9,300 per night villa would have cost around $84,000 total if the Trudeaus paid themselves. While the Conflict of Interest Act does not limit how generous a gift from a friend can be, the Ethics Commissioner suggested an over-the-top gift like a Ferrari would warrant investigation. So the lavish, free villa stay fell into a gray area, extravagant and elite but not crossing the line into requiring formal scrutiny. The controversy over Trudeau's December family vacation also stemmed from the Prime Minister's office frequently altering the details they provided about the trip. Initially, the PMO said Trudeau paid for the entire vacation stay and travel. They then retracted that, claiming the family stayed free of charge at a property owned by friends, with Trudeau only paying commercial rates for flights. The PMO changed the story a third time now claiming the Trudeaus stayed with unnamed family friends rather than at a friend's property. Throughout this, the PMO refused to disclose where exactly Trudeau vacationed, with the Conservatives calling on the Ethics Committee and Commissioner to review the vacation. Trudeau also maintained he followed rules by accepting free lodging from a friend, but would not elaborate with specifics. Trudeau's hollow justification shows he and his fellow Liberals believe they can live by different rules hiding in plain sight while expecting little scrutiny for behavior that would cause average citizens to be condemned. This mentality may explain why the ethics commissioner was so quick to dismiss concerns about Trudeau's vacation. Trudeau's controversial vacation is just the latest in a long list of scandals that have plagued his leadership since 2015. He has repeatedly broken ethics rules and failed to live up to his own lofty rhetoric. Trudeau is not the only Liberal Party elite dodging accountability. The CBC, Canada's public broadcaster, has also outraged citizens with its double standards. 
The CBC's president, Catherine Tate, announced plans to cut hundreds of jobs due to a large budget shortfall. Yet when asked whether executive bonuses would also be cut, she refused to give a straight answer. In fact, Ms. Tate indicated bonuses would likely still be awarded to CBC's top brass if performance criteria are met. She tried to justify this by claiming the bonuses were a small fraction of CBC's total salary budget. But this just showcases the callousness of handing out executive bonuses while cutting hundreds of jobs. One liberal MP conceded that while bonuses may be justified when a company is thriving, Canadians will have a hard time accepting CBC bonuses while regular workers suffer. The CBC relies heavily on funding from Canadian taxpayers to operate. In 2021, it received over $1 billion in government support. Yet despite this generous funding, the CBC claims it faces a major budget shortfall and must cut jobs as a result. Meanwhile, CBC paid out nearly $15 million in executive bonuses last year. And Ms. Tay's refusal to consider cutting these bonuses has sparked accusations that CBC leadership is more focused on self-enrichment than responsible stewardship of taxpayer funds. Conservative MPs grilled Ms. Tate about how CBC can justify bonuses when its ratings are in decline and government funding keeps increasing. She provided only vague responses about how bonuses are tied to performance metrics. Unlike private corporations that must be accountable to shareholders, the CBC has no external oversight. Its board is entirely appointed by the Liberal government, which appears reluctant to hold the CBC responsible for its spending. In testimony before the House of Commons Heritage Committee Tuesday, CBC boss Catherine Tay explained how difficult it is to do the CBC's work without having support from the people. But I'd argue that it's not difficult. It's a warning sign and wake-up call. She also claimed one of the CBC's main goals is to combat disinformation. We've been talking a lot about misinformation and disinformation being spread, and I'm wondering if you... How difficult is it for the CBC to manage stuff that we've even heard in this committee today when we hear the viewership metric being misrepresented, right? And we're hearing the the ad numbers being misrepresented. We've heard the leader of the opposition um, say he's going to take over the CBC building on Front Street and turn it into housing. I think that's the only reason we would have heard anything about CBC real estate today. Would you respond to how difficult it is as a public broadcaster to have elected officials at your throats all the time? I will speak on behalf of not only my management team, but the entire uh, 7,500 people that work at CBC Radio Canada. It is extremely difficult to not have the love and the support for the work that we do. However, we continue to do it because we believe that serving Canadians, uh, English and French and Indigenous, is worth it. It is a pillar of our democracy, and everything that we do is exactly to your point, to combat disinformation. It's why we have something on our website set that, that's called Get the Facts. When somebody says something that's inaccurate, we correct it. It is absolutely critical that Canadians can count on us. We saw the numbers during the COVID years. 25 million Canadians were visiting our digital sites because they knew they could depend on us. As Canadians, we do not need the government's broadcaster to determine what is and what is not disinformation. Once again, this situation reeks of an elitist institution protecting its own interests while everyday citizens suffer the consequences. Canadians have every right to demand more accountability. We must cancel this program, defund the CBC, and give Canadians a tax break. It seems that Trudeau sees nothing wrong with accepting extravagant gifts from wealthy friends. Meanwhile, the CBC keeps protecting executive bonuses. This hypocrisy justifiably angers Canadians who play by different rules. He brushes off each scandal and ethics violation with little consequence. And liberal institutions like the CBC and Ethics Commissioner aid this lack of accountability. Trudeau operates like an elitist monarch living in an ivory tower, divorced from the lives of everyday citizens. The latest controversies surrounding Trudeau's vacation and the CBC bonuses are just symptoms of a larger disease, a government culture of self-interest, cronyism, and privilege. Well, that's all for now. What do you think of Trudeau's most recent scandals? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support. I will see you in the next one.